Greetings everyone, my name is Reynolds, and today we're looking how we can fix the Virtus Praetors. Now this is a unit that was an absolute staple in 9th edition throughout the entire edition actually. Before the Codex, after the Codex, at the very end of 9th edition, Virtus Praetors were just always good. However, that is not so much the case in 10th edition, where, as they say, the mighty have fallen. So what happened to the Virtus Praetors? What brought about their downfall? Well, first of all, we had general game changes. Things such as the fly keyword not allowing you to ignore terrain anymore. Toughness being increased throughout the entire game. And the fact that medium lethality is down meant that weapons that are equipped by something like the Virtus Praetor just isn't that much worth anymore. However, the Virtus Praetors aren't actually as bad as people might go and think. They're actually quite decent. Granted, you do need a captain in the squad to make them decent. Now, what is it a captain does that makes them decent? Well, he gives them 6-inch consolidation. That is very powerful if you can kill the unit and then move up to 6 inches towards the nearest objective marker. Hell, it's even powerful if you can tie up an enemy vehicle so it can't move. He also gives them a once per game 12-inch move at the end of your opponent's fight phase. And if you've played as Eldar or against Eldar, you know how strong out-of-phase movement is. Phantasm is like the bane of the Eldar Codex. Everyone hates it, and at the same time, everyone loves it when they play Eldar. And I think it just goes to show how powerful movement-based abilities, especially out-of-phase abilities, can be. Now you can even couple that with, say, Ceaseless Hunter, which allows you to move up to 6 inches after something ends a move within 9 inches of you. And if you give that to a good player, they can probably do some very nasty tricks. And yet they still don't see any play. So how, how is that? Why is that? Well, we've mentioned some of the things, but let's move over to the Virtus Praetors themselves and look at their datasheet and explore a bit about why they're bad and then also some possible solutions to making them decent again. So, starting off, does GW hate them after 9th edition? There are some rumors about a GV designer losing against like a 12th man bike list. I don't know if those rumors are true, but they are probably among the biggest losers from 9th to 10th edition, at the very least in the Custodes Index. First of all, their toughness went from toughness 6 to toughness 6. Staying at the same toughness as a medium... Unit, I, when I say medium unit, I mean something like a land speeder, a biker, stuff like that. If you're staying at the same toughness you were in 9th edition, you are a loser in that department. Toughness 6 is now the realm of Gravis and regular Custodes toughness. The bikes also being toughness 6, in theory means that you gain no durability by putting him on the bike, despite the one bonus wound they gain. And I forgot to mention it here in the list, but they also lost a wound, going from 5 wounds per model to 4 wounds per model. So I suppose you could argue they are a Terminator at a worse toughness on a bike. But the bike gives them 12 inch movement. That's great, right? Well, yes. Unfortunately, with 10th edition, Fly lost the ability to move through terrain. And that matters a whole lot more than you might think. If you were playing an army that didn't really use Fly units, you probably haven't noticed this. But if you did play a unit that uses Fly movement, then you know how big of an impact this change had on the mobility of units. Yes, it can move 12 inches, but having to move around ruins every single time you do a move essentially cuts 4 to 6 inches of movement depending on where you want to go. So in reality, the Virtus Praetor does not have a 12 inch move. It has an 8 or even 6 inch move. Then there's also the Salvo Launchers. They went from being an actual anti-tank option that was AP4 at damage D3 plus 3, to just being damage 3 at AP2 and strength 9. And you probably know that strength 9 really does not wound many vehicles at all, and only having a single shot means that it's most likely just not gonna do anything at all. The Hurricane Boulders, they got a side grade, they gained Twin Linked, which means that they are more effective against things that are tougher, but they also lost 6 inches of range, which means you have to be within a 9-inch range to get the rapid fire instead of a 12-inch range as before. So yeah, I'll call that a side grade because, as I said, Twin Link does mean that you do have a more decent chance at wounding something that's a little bit tougher, but at that point you're still shooting bolters at them. AP 0, just damage 1, it's not gonna do a whole lot. And those are all of the changes, as well as, of course, their points cost. Now, the Virtus Praetor's current point cost comes in at 80 points per model. 
I think it's a bit hard to compare the points value in 10th edition to 9th edition. In any case, if we just compare it within the index, they are 30 points more expensive than your regular custodian guard. They have the same toughness, they have one wound more, they cannot go through buildings like the custodian guard can do, they have one less attack at the exact same profile as a guardian spear, but they do have lance. That being said, paying 30 more points excuse me, for one wound and lance at minus one attack and not being able to walk through terrain is a very, very big premium. So how do we fix them? And before anyone gets angry in the comments or like, oh, you're just making them super broken, hear me out. I am not saying that all of these changes should happen at the same time. I'm not saying they should all happen at all. These are just a few suggestions I have on how I would fix them if GW called me and told me I had free reign to make them a usable unit. Not a top tier unit, not a good unit, a usable unit. The first thing I would do would to cut the points cost down to 65 points per model. You might think this is a little cheap, but keep in mind all the things we've just discussed. As they are right now, they are 30 points per model more expensive than a regular custodian guard. If we want to put a premium on having that 12 inch movement, despite it not really meaning a whole lot, and having lands, well, then I think 15 points more expensive is a decent place to start. Another change I would personally like to see is for the salvo launchers. Now, I've given four options here, and my thinking is that any one of these changes would be fine, but I would like to see two of these changes get through. I don't really care which two of them they are, but I think if you give two of these things to the salvo launcher, I think it becomes an okay weapon. Option number one is simply going to strength 10. This is not going to change a whole lot, but it will help it wound stuff like a rhino or some medium vehicles a bit better. The next thing is giving it the Melta 2 keyword. I mean, despite having free flat damage and two less AP, I always kind of seen the Savo Launcher as being Melta-esque. I mean, it basically had the same profile in 9th edition as Melta, so I don't think it completely breaks the bank to give it Melta 2. You still need to be within a 12 inch range to actually activate that. You cannot advance and shoot. I don't think it's completely broken. Option number three is simply giving the Savo Launchers two shots. One shot at the current profile is just not going to do anything against Toughness 10 or above. Two shots is still not going to do a whole lot, but it's more shots, more chances, and at least you can hopefully do a little bit of damage against, say, a Land Raider. And the last option, which is the one I like the least, is giving it the Anti-Vehicle 4+. I am not a huge fan of just slapping Anti-something on a weapon and saying, that's it, my job here is done. But it would add a unit to the Custodes roster that can actually somewhat reliably deal tank damage. Currently, the only thing we really have for that purpose is the Caladius Graph Tank. And even that one is a little bit hit and miss. And I think it would be okay to give the bikes the role of anti-vehicle, seeing as they also have lands. So you could imagine you have your unit, go up to a land raider, shoot its shots. Anti-vehicle 4+, plus probably means you get, you know, two wound through, one of them is being saved, and then one deals free damage. Then you charge your unit into the land raider with lands, and you can deal some more damage. But hell, even that probably isn't enough to kill the land raider. So I don't think this completely breaks the bank, but it is a lazy man's option. So yeah, those are my suggestions for buffing salvo launchers. Obviously, as I said, I don't think it should have all of these. I think if you give it one of them, it's okay. If you give two of them, that's great. Some of them obviously go together better than others. For example, Strength 10 and Anti-Vehicle 4 Plus doesn't do a whole lot because, I mean, it doesn't really matter how high your strength is if you're always wounding on a 4 Plus anyway. But say, give it Strength 10 and two shots, that's a good change. Give it Melta 2 and Anti-Vehicle, that's a good change. Give it two shots and Anti-Vehicle, that's a good change as well, without making them completely busted. Another thing I should say is, once again, these are seen as individual changes. I'm not saying that it should be 65 points and these salvo launcher changes. I'm saying take one, leave one, whatever it is. Next change I'd like to see is that instead of just adding six inches to their advance, I would like it to be that you either add 6 inches to their advance, or if you choose to go through a building, you just move normally, as in 12 inches, and then still not able to shoot, charge, all those things. This will give them a whole lot more mobility on the map. They can now go through walls, think about Chaos Knights and how they can walk through walls. Basically, you give the Virtus Praetors the same ability, but without being able to shoot and charge afterwards. 
And the final change I'd like to recommend is the unit size. Right now, you have a maximum size of three and a minimum size of two. I would like to change that to be two, three, or four models in the unit. Because they are so dependent on having a captain in the unit, I think it would be okay that you can go a little bit big without going to a six-man unit like you did in 9th edition. And two to four models is in line with what GW seems to want custodies to be. Infantry goes from four to five. Something like Venatari goes from three to six. Terminators goes from two to six. And I don't think it would break the bank either if Vertispraetors could go from two to four. That also still means that you can buy one box of Virtus Praetors and build two of them as normal and one captain and then you have that unit going. You can also build the whole squad as regular Virtus Praetors, get another box, then add one more and the captain. And then for your next box of Virtus Praetors, if you get another box, then you have one left over to make into a captain. So you can have a four-man unit with a captain and a three-man unit with a captain while not buying more than three boxes of Virtus Praetors. That's not a lot of Virtus Praetors you're buying, but at least it makes sense in the philosophy of GW wanting you to be able to play with the box as you get it, and then when you expand, you can like linearly expand the unit or add more units. So those are my suggestions for the Virtus Praetor. However, there is another big thing we need to talk about, and that is, of course, the shield captain on Virtus Praetor. Once again, great on paper, some very good abilities, but they're just not that good on the table. And the question kind of becomes, does someone at GW just really hate the shield captain on Virtus Praetor? Among all of the other nerfs that Custodes got internally, there's also game balance changes. One of those game balance changes was how free stratagems worked. Free stratagems can now only be used on battle tactic stratagems. For Custodes, that is plus one to wound from Slayer of Nightmares, minus one damage from Arcane Genetic Alchemy, and plus one attack from Avenge the Fallen, or plus two attacks if you're under starting strength, or sorry, half strength. Now, you have those three stratagems. Slayer of Nightmares is out, because if you charge something, you get lands. So unless that monster or vehicle has minus one to wound, Slayer of Nightmare does nothing for you. Arcane Genetic Alchemy is out, because that can only be used on infantry, and Virtus Praetors are, famously, not infantry. And then finally, Avenge the Fallen. Avenge the Fallen only starts working once you've lost a model. Now, I'm not sure if GW plays the same custodies that I do, but say a three-man unit with a captain, that's four models, at four wounds in the current metagame, does not survive to just lose one model. It's kind of the same issue that Sisters of Battle has. No one will put any shots into that unit unless they wipe it clean. And so none of the custody stratagems works on the free stratagem that the captain gives them. The only thing he can realistically use on them is CP reroll, which, you know, it's nice, but you don't always need that. So generally, all of the stratagems that he can use for free are pointless. My next thing that makes me think that GW hates him is that they decrease the cost of normal Virtus Praetors in the data slate, but they increase the cost of the Shield Captain, which is probably because he has that ability, which is a free stratagem. But as we just talked about, there are basically no free stratagems for him to use. So they increased his cost to 180 points, which is 210 points if you take Ceaseless Hunter for the movement shenanigans we talked about earlier. Now, how do we fix him? Well, generally, I think they just overcosted a lot of Custodes HQ units. I think you could pretty realistically take them back to the old cost, which was 120 points for a normal shield captain, and I think 140 points for a shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. But let's say they take the normal shield captain back to 130 points. Well, then let's just add those 15 extra points and make the shield captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike 145 points. That makes him slightly more expensive than buying two Virtus Praetors at our new price point of 65 points per model, which keeps in line with what the other shield captains cost, which is roughly 230% of the unit they're leading. Well, per model, that is. How do we fix his free stratagem ability? Well, the thing is that we can't really do that, because to do that, we would either need to change what is battle tactics in the Custodes Index, or how free stratagems works in general. At one point during this video, or creation of this video, I was thinking about just giving him a completely new ability altogether. However, all of these changes that I am suggesting are already pretty far-fetched, outside of the points changes, because GW don't seem to want to change abilities whenever they can. So I simply think we'll have to live with the fact that his free stratagem ability equals a command point reroll, and that's it. 
And you might have noticed I didn't change his sweeping advance ability, because that ability is great, it's flavorful even. And if you combine that with the change we've made to the Virtus Praetor's ability, allowing them to move through terrain, but at a normal move instead of an advance move, while still not being able to advance and charge, I think there's some play here. Turn 1, you advance the Virtus Praetor unit, so it moves 12, but can go through terrain, you cannot shoot and charge, but you can get into a good position. Then, at the end of your opponent's fight phase, you then move 12 inches, and you don't have to be scared of being shot or charged or anything like that, because it happens at the end of your opponent's move phase. Then, at the start of your turn, you now have, hopefully, a good position to strike something, and that is kind of what the Virtus Praetors are supposed to do. They are a fast attack unit. Well, they used to be called fast attack, now they're kind of like slow attack because they can't go through walls. But with these changes, you could actually have, you know, a fast attack unit. Some people might be scared that this will just turn into an alpha strike army where you just spam bikes and get them on out there. However, we could mostly fix that by simply doing the same thing as the strategic mastery ability where we say that the sweeping advanced 12 inch move at the end of the opponent's fight phase can only be used by one unit with this ability. That way, at the very worst, you're looking at a shield captain with four bikes charging something, which is still scary. Don't get me wrong, but it should be scary. We're still talking about a 450-ish point unit charging at you, right? It's, it's almost a quarter of the army invested into this one unit, which has, you know, shield captain and four bikes. They should be able to deal some damage and be a little scary. And then they die because they're toughness six, four wounds, and yep, that's just how the game is right now. Alright, that is all for this video. Do let me know what you think of this style of video. I think it could be quite fun to look at some of the worst units in the Custodes roster, go through each of them and talk about what we can change without being completely wild about it to make them viable. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment and subscribe. It helps me for the free free charge of... well, free. I, free free charge. For the small charge of free. You can support this poor student. Until I see you again, my name has been Reynolds. I hope you have a wonderful time.